Of course, we encourage you to attend the lessons live as much as possible uh, because it should be much better for the question and answer session and for the interaction. Well, someone is grabbing the chat that they can hear me. Can you, can you hear me or not? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, not very clear to me. Okay, let me try to remove this. Is it better like this? Yes, yes. absolutely. Okay, so I'll get rid of the technology and I'll talk in the computer directly. Uh, so, once again, uh, welcome everyone to this promo course. As I was saying, this is the, the course number 13, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a real pleasure to see that we have the play the chat game, uh, many participants connected. I lost track, but uh, uh, yes, 28 participants connected, including the, the professors. As I was saying before, this course is organized by the Mountain Partnership Secretary at FAO. Jointly with two Italian universities, the University of Turin and the University of Tuscia, and the representative of these two universities are here with us today. today. You can see Michele, Crepat, and Giuseppe Scarascia. We have also a chair that is Danilo Bozzone. He will be with you throughout this course. And um, as I was saying before, this is the second time that due to the pandemic we are not able to organize this course in person. Usually, it's offered in two beautiful Italian villages, uh, one in the west part, one in the east part, and we hope to be able to resume this online, this uh, in-person course next year. Uh, it would be nice to be able to interact with you uh, face to face, but we are very, very happy to be able to continue these courses through this online system that has proven last year to be uh, Efficient to be a good replacement for this. I also see Hans Schreier, who is our I don't know, someone with me. Hans Schreier is a professor at the University of British Columbia and he has been uh, uh, supporting this course, I think, for at least the last six, seven years, Sam, if I'm not mistaken. But without further ado, I pass the floor to first Michele and then uh, Giuseppe for some opening remarks, and then I'll share with you a quick presentation. Michele, over to you. Uh, thanks a lot, Rosa Laura. Uh, many greetings to everyone, also from my, my side. Uh, I prepare me to a short presentation. I think I could give this short presentation after Rosa Laura. And I think now I can give the floor to Giuseppe for his preliminary greetings, also from the University of Tuscia. It's a joint venture between the uh, University of Torino, where I work, and University of Tuscia, thanks to the participation of Professor Scarascia Munoz. So, Giuseppe, thanks a lot, and the floor is for you. Giuseppe, non ti sentiamo. Sorry, I, I thought that you were managing. Okay, so a warm welcome to all of you. And uh, uh, as I said, I, I hope that uh, next year we can uh, uh, see uh, all of you in, in presence in our field site in the Alps. I have prepared also a few slides to show where we where we are, where we work in the mountains, and probably after Michele, I can show these uh, this slides to you. So have a nice time with uh, IPROMO FAO Summer School. Please, Rosa Laura, to you. Yeah. Sorry, I think Michele was going to share his presentation. Oh, 
Shall I start or start, start, I please, Rosa Laura, you, you can start and then I think I go later and then give the floor to Giuseppe again. Okay, sounds good. So let me share my presentation. Okay, can you see my presentation now? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, I have prepared a um, presentation about why mountains are relevant, a few slides about the mountain partnership, and a few slides about what you can do to support mountains. So the first slide is about why mountains matter. Uh, you have been selected because uh, you are all working on issues related to mountain development. So more, I am sure that many of you are perfectly aware of what I'm now telling you, but this is just to have everyone on the same page. So mountains cover about 27% of the world, and 50% of the world population, according to the last calculation, is living in mountain areas, which is 1.1 billion people around the world. Mountains are globally relevant because they provide a lot of resources, a lot of services, a lot of goods to uh, humanity. In particular, the most important one by far is water, because they provide between 60 to 80 percent of the fresh water we all use in the earth. Mountains are covered by forests, so they play a very important role also for, um, for uh, the forest, for oxygen, etc and about 40 percent. They host a lot of terrestrial biodiversity, about 50 percent of the global mountain, the global biodiversity hotspot are mountain areas. And of course they are beautiful, so during, during a normal time they host a lot of tourists and they host also uh, different kinds of tourists which are all very relevant. They are also important for most of the world's religions, More, many of the uh, of the religions around the world have somehow a relation with mountains. There are, there are sacred mountains, there are um, stories about mountains in most of the religions. But we also know the mountain people are particularly at risk. They, we have conducted a study um, that was published last year that shows that uh, one in two mountain people living in rural mountain areas in developing countries is at risk, at risk of um, food insecurity. So it's at risk of not having enough food during the year. Um, so in this slide, um, I would like just to share with you a quick recap of how mountains have gained some space in the United Nations world at international level. So mountains were not really a system, an ecosystem that was uh, considered uh, till about 30 years ago. It was at the Rio summit, the famous Rio summit in 92, that for the very first time mountains were included in the discussion. And this was thanks to a small group of people that were very passionate and very aware about the challenges um, confronting mountain areas. So for the first time in the famous Agenda 21, mountains had a chapter devoted to mountains. There was a, there was a chapter devoted to mountains in this Agenda 21. Then in the following meetings related to Rio, Rio plus 10, Rio plus 20, mountains continue to be fully included. And in 2002, uh, the mountain partnership where I work uh, I was the secretary of the Mountain Parish it was created. 2002 was a very important year because it was also the International Year of Mountains. And many countries they organized events, a committee discussed the relevance of the mountains. So somehow the 2002 was a real uh, moment of, uh, of relevance for mountains. It's like a stepping stone. Then the 2000, in 2015, we had uh, developed sustainable development goals where mountains were also included, in particular in the one, uh, in the um, sustainable development goal number 15, that is looking at biodiversity. And uh, in 2018, we had a framework for action to ensure the full implementation of the sustainable development goals 
and in general of the Agenda 2030 in Latin America. So I think we are all here because we are all aware that mantas are under pressure and now mantas need special attention. They are considered fragile ecosystems and they would need uh, the dedicated attention to, uh, to fully develop. Uh, they are under pressure for many reasons and so you uh, will hear uh, in details during the coming days about some of these uh, key challenges confronting mountain areas, we know that climate change, hunger, poverty, migration are uh, causing a lot of issues to mountain and particularly to mountain people. As I was saying before, mountain people are uh, among the ones that are suffering more for poverty and uh, malnutrition. Um, we know that the food insecurity in mountain areas is particularly high. We have about 350 million people around the world living in mountain areas that are at risk of food insecurity. That means not having enough food or not, not be sure of having enough food throughout the year. And this, the problem is that this trend is increasing. So this trend in mountain areas regarding food insecurity keeps increasing since we are monitoring. And we are monitoring food insecurity since the year 2000. And since, since then, this food insecurity has always increased, while in most parts of the world, the food insecurity is decreasing. Well, I'm talking, of course, not in a pandemic context. And uh, another issue that I think is uh, worth mentioning here is that uh, the majority of mountain people live in developing countries. It means that in developed countries, mountains are highly depopulated. This is a trend that started many, many years ago, basically after the Second World War, and this is still um, continuing. So most of mountain peoples are now living in developing countries, and they play a very important role as stewards in their territories. So we also know that uh, the pandemic caused very serious uh, problems to mountain areas. We say in general that mountain people live in uh, agriculture in the broad sense, including of course forestry and fishery, live of um, live of remittances because many people migrate and they send uh, some money to their families in mountain areas and they live of tourism. And we all know that these three uh, elements, in particular remittances and tourists, have been very very seriously affected by the pandemic because people were not able to find uh, opportunities, economic opportunities uh, in lowland areas outside of London, so they were not able to send the remittances home. And the tourist was basically stopped for almost enough everywhere. So two of the main sources of income for mountain areas have declined. I think we need to be uh, positive and look at this as an opportunity to uh, build forward better, as they say in the UN world, so to build again mountain areas in a more sustainable way. And this is why we decided to devote this course this year to the post-COVID recovery, because we think it's important to find ways to promote local livelihood, to promote a growth, uh, in the post-pandemic uh, era um, that includes fully include mountain areas and mountain people. So you will hear a lot about sustainable mountain development, and I'm sure you also have a lot of uh, ideas yourself about what man sustainable mountain development means to you. I'm sharing here a slide to tell you what man sustainable mountain development means uh, for us in the Mountain Partnership Secretariat and how we try to um, implement it. So, sustainable mountain development means that uh, um, we want to enhance, we want to support the capacity of institutions to promote it. So, it's a uh, strengthening institution to implement, implement and promote sustainable mountain development, is to manage sustainably the landscape and to ensure that the important ecosystem services provided by mountains continue to flow to benefit more mountain and lowland people. We think that it is absolutely crucial to put in the driver's seat to empower the mountain communities because they are the real owner and the real steward of the landscape. 
and they possess a lot of knowledge, traditional knowledge, innovative, etc. that can really make the difference. And we also think that it's, uh, it's needed to increase the sustainability of the mountain economies to ensure that they can have a proper food security, proper nutrition, proper education for their children. So when we talk about sustainable mountain development, this is what we need, but I'm sure you will discuss this at length and, um, and it would be interesting to listen to your definition of sustainable mountain development. Okay, now I move to the Mountain Partnership where, um, as I said before, I work with the Mountain Partnership Secretariat Many of your organizations or countries belong to the Mountain Partnership, and this is why uh, you are here. The Mountain Partnership was created back in 2002 and was created by two governments, the Italian and the Swiss one, and two uh, United Nations organizations, uh, FAO and UN. It started with a small group of members, but includes now more than 400 members uh, of different categories. Uh, 60 governments, 18 United Nations or uh, international organizations, 24 global major groups, which are major international organizations, and many, many uh, civil society organizations. Uh, so there is this World Secretariat, which is hosted by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, uh, in Rome, where I work. And the Secretariat is supported by three main donors, which are Italy, Switzerland, and Andorra. And we're very grateful for their contribution because otherwise we wouldn't be able to carry out this work. So the work of the Mountain Parish is organized around some areas of work. Advocacy is a very important area of work. Now we need to ensure that mountains are included in the main international processes, like the we have very big campaign for the Agenda 2030 to ensure the inclusion of mountains. We work with many of our organizations, with many governments, to promote mountains in that context. We work as a partnership, we share knowledge. So we share knowledge that we produce, but mainly we share knowledge produced by our partners. So whenever you have a new publication or relevant data or an activity that you think is worth sharing, please, Come to us, and we would be very happy to share with our members and with our with our list, because we have a list for members, but also a list that is uh, that goes beyond our members and our uh, people that are interested in mountain issues. Uh, we promote uh, trainings like this one, so we have this Ipromo summer school, which was offered a few weeks ago, basically for the first time also in Spanish. Ipromo has been traditional in English. But uh, this issue of having also this course in different languages was brought to our attention many times. So for the first time a few weeks ago, we were able to offer this course in Spanish in collaboration with Condeson. And um, we also offer this uh, another um, summer school on mountain agrobiodiversity, which is organized jointly with another university, the University of Rome, La Sapienza, and um, other partners. And um, we also try to support our members uh, by mobilizing resources for, for project and initiatives. Um, International Mountain Day, it's uh, every year on 11 of December. This is an important opportunity to raise attention globally about mountain issues. Um, usually many, many events are organized and we produce some fact sheets and poster and we share widely. This year, the theme is sustainable mountain tourism. Also in this um, framework of promoting a uh, recovery for mountain areas. So we hope that uh, uh, the global tourism can resume, can start again in a sustainable way, benefiting local population and without uh, causing damage to the environment. So the theme uh, is for this year, International Mountain Day, again, sustainable mountain tourism, and we hope that you will be able to celebrate the, the, this day with us. Uh, yes, I spoke already about our summer school and the training opportunities that we offer. The, the third bullet referred to an indicator that we managed, and this is the indicator for the uh, Sustainable Development Goal Target 15.4, uh, that, mon that monitors the, um, the state of mountains around the world. 
Okay, these are my last slides. I just would like to share with you an activity that is uh, quite promising and is, uh, is uh, about the promotion of mountain products. Uh, I'm sure you know very well that uh, mountain agriculture has a lot of specificity. Uh, mountain agriculture usually is a small scale, it's linked to family farming, and uh, often these products are of very high quality. Um, Many years ago, we had a little project and we were dealing with saffron from Morocco. We share a sample of the saffron with slow food. I know many of you, of you know slow food. They, they had some um, testing of this saffron and they were very surprised about the very high quality of this product. But the problem was that the producers were getting a very small amount of money because most of the, most of the income, most of the money coming from the sale of this saffron was going to middlemen. And the producers, they were mainly women, were not even aware that that product was so uh, so good, such a high quality. So we developed a, problem, a project initially within the Mountain Partnership Secretariat to ensure that mountain, community, uh, mountain communities can have a, a decent uh, compensation for their work, especially for their high quality products. So we have... Um, this activity now for mountain products that uh, no, is uh, recognizing that uh, mountain products are primarily green. They usually have low impact. They are highly diverse. In every garden, in mountain areas, you can find a lot of different cultivars, a lot of varieties, because this is a way to increase the resilience of their, of their production. And we also know that there is a rising demand around the world for high quality products. And um, we think it's important to ensure that the value chain are equitable, so they are uh, benefiting really the producers and their clients. So with a number of partners, we have developed this, uh, uh, this uh, participatory guarantee system. So the communities itself are basically uh, documenting and certifying the quality of their production, and if it is an organic production. So if you want to know more, please visit our website. And um, it's quite interesting. We have developed with uh, ECOAM this, uh, this PGA system and uh, the products that are um, included in this program, they have a label that tell the story of the products, the story of the community, and they've all um, witnessed a very good increase in their sales, in the price of the product. Okay, this is just an idea of uh, the products. I'm sorry, this slide wasn't very nice. Okay, so this is the slide about. Uh, sorry, thank you. Okay, this is just a list of the promo codes that we have organized during the last uh, 13 years. As you can see, uh, we have touched upon many different uh, topics from, of course, climate change has been there many times, biodiversity, disaster risk reduction. Um, and economic issues, etc. So this year uh, we focus on the post-COVID-19 recovery. Okay. So the as I was saying before, this course is organized jointly with two Italian universities. I'm very happy to uh, to continue this very good collaboration that started many years ago with uh, with Michele and Giuseppe, and of course with Danilo, who's our chair. Uh, the course is organized around 10 days of lessons. Um, as you have seen from the program, there is a very interesting mix of instructors because we have uh, some people coming from the academic world. Of course, we have several university professors, but we also have people coming from the United Nations world, so they're more experts working in the field. And we have also some uh, um, people coming from different uh, backgrounds. So we have uh, about, I think we have 40 confirmed participants, and they are coming from 18, well, you are coming from 18 different countries. Uh, it's a pity that we cannot have a beer together or something after work to discuss um, you know, how mountains are managed in your different uh, countries, but uh, hopefully we will be able to do something uh, social, in, uh, even literally. Um, usually the course runs for four hours per day. We know that uh, it could be very early or very late in the day for many of you. So all the lessons are recorded and you will be able to listen 
to these um, lessons uh, whenever you have your, your time, whenever it's convenient for you. And all the lessons will uh, later on made available uh, on YouTube so that you can listen to this lesson later on and you can share also with your colleagues. Uh, as Danilo will remind you, a questionnaire will be shared with you at the, at the day, at the end of each lesson, and you will have to fill in this questionnaire. And uh, teamwork is also foreseen. And uh, again, Danilo will provide more information and the and diploma will be shared with you at the end of the course. Um, okay, this is my last slide and uh, it's possibly the most important one. I would like to highlight that for us, to organize these training courses is a way to create a group of committed people that are able to promote changes in mountain areas when, you know, when you go back to your normal life. So for us, the moment you take part in a new promo course, you become part of a network of friends, network of allies that are committed to promote sustainable mountain development, they are committed to stay connected and continue working together. At the end of the course, I will share with you a, a table with all the people that have participated in the promo course throughout the years, so that, so that you can see um, who has taken part in this course from your country, from your organization, from your region, and also, if you need information from another area of the world, you can get in contact with a, a former or current diploma participant to, to get additional information. So you are really joining a community today, and we think it's important that you stay connected and you stay engaged. And we are here really available to support you and to provide you know, elements, information, to ensure that you can really fully exploit this opportunity, but also stay connected later on. Uh, communication is also important. So if you want to um, tweet or use Instagram, please use the hashtag MountainsMaster that you see on the slide. It will be a way to create uh, some kind of connection to the social network. And um, well, thank you very much. I really wish you a very pleasant course very enjoyable and uh, um, looking forward to your feedback. Thank you very much and over to Michele. Thanks a lot Rosa Laura, very nice overview as usual. I try to share my screen too. Okay, I hope it works. So welcome also from my side. Uh, it's really a pleasure to meet you even in such a way virtually i hope maybe in presence in future to have a possibility to to meet you in presence uh, i try to to fill my personal presentation according to the standard of the template our chairman sent to you so i try to fill the template in order to present myself and my institution here so you can see my name michele freppas and i work at the university of torino and this is my email address for any communication. And uh, according to the template, I have to make a short summary about my education. I, I took my master's degree in forestry and environmental science um, some years ago. <laughs> then I had a PhD in soil science and I focused my research on the processes of the soil and snow interface. And at present, uh, I'm professor in soil science, snow science at the University in Torino. And my main research interests are mountain soils, no ecology. So every time I really like cold temperature, I like um, uh, the solid form of water. So it's really uh, a pleasure for me to talk about mountains because I love mountains. Uh, now I'm in a, just speaking from a small village close to the Monte Rosa Massive, Massive here. And so just because where I, where I live. Uh, a few words about the University of Torino. It's located in West Italy. It, it was funded more than 500 years ago. And uh, by now we have more than uh, around 70,000 students and 4,000 academic, administrative and technical staff. And I work at this department, the Department of Agriculture, Forest and Food Science. Uh, we have a nice campus, uh, not far from the center of Torino. And uh, there we do uh, our teaching activities and research activities in uh, different uh, topics. The main topics are just uh, 
field. So we do um, research in, in the agricultural field, as you can see here. So uh, also considering also mountain agriculture. Then we have uh, research activities in the forest field uh, at different elevation, the plain, and also, of course, in the mountains. And not the last <laughs> uh, food. So we have a specialist in wine production, cheese production, uh, honey production, of course, uh, also with a special look on mountain products, as already uh, Rosa Laura mentioned. And here's some facts and figures. I don't want to waste your time in numbers. Just to give you an overview, uh, our how many projects and scientific paper we publish. I mean, this is just a, a, sh a short summary of what we are currently doing. Concerning my uh, personal uh, project, the project where I'm involved, for example, I, I, I contribute to the Alpine Soul Partnership. Uh, I think that it's very important to create a network also. Uh, on mountain specialists, but in, in my case also on soil specialists working in mountains. And this Alpine Soil Partners is a, a network which is being developed in the Alps, but of course we are open also to collaborate and share experience also with other mountain chains all over the world. And here you can have, if you are interested and someone is interested in soil, how to manage soil uh, or the importance of soils, please you can find more information uh, on this website and also, of course, uh, uh, getting in touch with me. Uh, other important thing concerning my activity, and usually when we did, the, we organized a, a promo course in presence, we spent at least one day up to this uh, place, uh, which is uh, the uh, LTR site, Instituto Mosso, close to the Monte Rosa Math Massive, at more or less 3,000 meters above sea level up there. And we have our mountain research station, uh, where is an historical mountain research station founded in 1907. Just imagine more than 100 years. And up there, uh, scientists studied the human adaptation to high elevation, geology, botany, uh, soil science. So it was a place, a sanctuary for mountain research activity. And uh, of course, there we are studying different components of mountain ecosystems. So we study the atmospheric deposition, the quality of water, the quality of soil, and different aspects of the mountain environment. And we do this uh, with research on an LTR perspective. We are really interested in long-term data, the importance to collect for a long time uh, data about the mountain environment. And here, just to give you some example of the data we uh, collect, uh, meteorological data since uh, the 1925, and then other data concerning snow, soil, water chemistry, and other, other research topics. And a new initiative where I've been involved is this new PhD, is a national PhD, uh, which has already been organized uh, concerning sustainable development and climate change. Uh, the, the application deadline is the 22 of July of this year, so the, the application is still open. We have more than 100 uh, uh, positions in this uh, PhD, and as you can see, we touch different topics concerning the sustainable development and climate change. Again, if you need more information, you can ask me uh, and send me an email. Of course, last but not least, of course, <laughs> I, it's a pleasure to contribute and try to contribute to the um, I promo course. And so, of course, with uh, uh, this great initiative by FAO Mountain Partnership, and uh, we try to, to uh, give our uh, expertise concerning uh, the mountain sustainability, how to build uh, build the capacity to promote the development of mountain communities and ecosystems. And here, a uh, brief history, because it's uh, such, uh, I mean, many, many years ago, <laughs> it was 2008, thanks to Rosa Laura, of course, but I would like also to mention uh, Professor, Professor Romano Zanini, at that time with Rosa Laura, they had this uh, great idea <laughs> to organize I promo. So thanks a lot, Rosa Laura. <laughs> And with, of course, with uh, the Mountain Partnership, University of Torino, and also the town of Ormea. The town of Ormea, they decide at the time, correct me if I'm wrong, to organize a course about mountain in mountains, not to organize it in a large town such as Torino or Rome, but just to find 
mountain villages. And the town of Ormea and then other villages hosted their promo course uh, along the different years. In 2014, uh, Professor Zadini retired, and I, I it was a pleasure for me to, to uh, try to keep alive <laughs> the, my promo course. In 2016, the contribution of the National Research Council. Uh, it's a very important research center in Italy. And uh, Danilo Godone, our chairman, works uh, at the uh, CNR. Then in 2017, University of Tusha and Professor uh, Scalacia Munoz later will explain more about this uh, university. And, and then these arrows still going on, I mean, for 2021. 20, and then again, I, I hope in future to, 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 we will be able to, to still going on on this nice history. And and here, the different topic, uh, Rosalaura already show us. So very, very, and this word cloud just tried to summarize the keywords that have been used in the different courses all over the year. And of course, this year, the topic is really interesting. I mean, I think I will learn a lot about um, the lecture that will be held by the different specialists. And I think we have to consider two faces of a coin. I mean, on one side, of course, the pandemic and the restrictions just uh, have amplified the existing vulnerabilities uh, of mountain communities. I just put here an example uh, concerning where I live, uh, the European Alps, uh, mountain outbreak. Italy has deep snow, closed ski resorts. In mountain areas, the ski industry uh, give income to a lot of people, <laughs> and uh, due to the pandemic uh, situation, we have been obliged to close all these uh, uh, ski uh, resorts. And so this was really a, a problem for the income and for the uh, local community. And so uh, on the other side, of course, we have the opportunity uh, to find a way to improve the quality of the life in the mountains. And of course, it's not simple, I think, but I think it's something that we have to face and, and of course to find the best solution and i hope this course contribute to, to this dialogue to, to find maybe the best way to face this problem and find solution and so i i really hope that it will be useful for, for everybody in this uh, network uh, which, has, which is created by 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 by, by the promo course uh, so Thanks a lot for your attention. I, I hope you really enjoy the course and I put also some of my um, other interests. So as you can see here, of course, skiing, basketball, writing, reading, of course, mountain hiking. Okay? So thanks again. <laughs> I hope you will enjoy this experience and I give the floor to Professor Scalacio Munoz from the University of Tusha. So please, Giuseppe. Okay, thank you very much. So I try to share my presentation too. Please, Danilo, if I have some problem, help me. I'm here to help. <laughs> Perfecto. Ah, grazie. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, so again, best greetings to all of you and uh, a warm welcome. Uh, here to uh, IPROMO. Uh, I hope, okay. Okay. And uh, also, I see that there is also our old, good old friend uh, Hans Schreier, so best greeting also to him. Uh, I, I continue with uh, presentation in line with uh, Michele, what already Michele showed you. And so, uh, here are just a few information about, uh, uh, about myself and about uh, uh, the um, University of Tusha, my university, and, and also uh, the places where, where we work, generally in the mountain, because as I show you uh, later, uh, most of our forests in Italy are on the mountain. As you can see from the picture, I am... Uh, uh, from the University of Tusha, uh, Viterbo, Italy, close to Rome. I'll show you where it is. Here is also my, my email. And I will briefly uh, give you also some information on, on, on my field of work. As you can see, I work mainly on, on, on forestry. So I will uh, provide you also some little information about forest, forest environment, 
forest ecosystems and mountains. Uh, in fact, uh, my, my, let's say, background is in forest ecology and silviculture. I have a, I hold a master in forestry and also one in agronomy from southern Italy. And then I got uh, the PhD from University of Washington in Seattle, close to where Hans Schreier is. Um, now it's the turn to show you my university that is uh, a, a smaller the one than, uh, than the Turin, than the University of Michele. Uh, in fact, also uh, how my city, I mean, this uh, Viterbo city is a small city, but uh, quite old. The university is a university with 7,000, 8,000 uh, students with many different bachelor, master, and also PhD uh, courses. The interesting thing is that uh, since it is a, a university in a small town, so it is a diffused uh, university, so not a campus, but uh, uh, a diffused uh, university with many buildings in the old part of the city. Um, I go directly to, to, to the PhD course uh, that is taught in my, in my department. Uh, this, the, the title is Science of Sustainability with different, uh, um, different curricula, agro-food technology, biotechnology, and of course, uh, forest ecology and environmental science that is, uh, uh, again, uh, the field in which I, uh, I work. And here is the place where we conduct uh, researches and also field exercise for students uh, in the mountains and particularly in the Alps. But uh, as you can see, we are uh, in the eastern part of the Alps, so in north uh, eastern Italy, um, close to uh, some famous mountains like the Dolomites. And also you can see where is my university. So my university is in Viterbo in central Italy, but uh, we um, we run this uh, uh, field facility in the Alps, as I said. <clears throat> this is just uh, some pictures of the uh, structure where we bring the students, but also where we hold the uh, where we organize uh, the course, uh, the e promo course. So one week is in uh, generally in uh, um, in this place in our alpine research center and one week is in uh, piemonte organized by 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 michele so uh, we do hope that uh, you uh, i mean you could be able uh, next year to uh, reach us in uh, uh, in this uh, uh, alpine center where we as i said generally bring our students for um, field exercise in the forest, but also for uh, summer uh, schools, uh, uh, training courses, and so on. Here are just uh, some, some pictures of these mountains. They are not as high as Mount Rosa, but uh, we reach 3,000 uh, 3, meters and, uh, and more with a lot of different um, forest, forest types, uh, for structures and, and so on. These are just a uh, uh, few pictures of the of, of our uh, environment uh, in, as I said, in the Dolomites. And uh, uh, now I want just to show you a few information about uh, forest and forestry in Europe and in uh, Italy so that you can get uh, a flavor of uh, our uh, mountain environment. So this is a map of uh, forests in Europe. And as you can see, forests are basically almost everywhere in Europe, from, from Northern Europe down to the Mediterranean where, where we are. Uh, forest uh, surface in Europe cover more or less 40% of all, of all the surface in, uh, um, of our uh, European uh, countries. And uh, let's give uh, a closer look to, uh, to Italy. So this is Italy, and uh, uh, I can show you 
where uh, my town, my university is Viterbo, that is very close to Rome. And Rome is the place also where um, Rosa Laura uh, works with uh, FAO. So in, in Rome, there are different UN uh, organizations like FAO, IFAD, and uh, uh, food program, all uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, agriculture, food, and uh, environment and forest. In the north, as I as I as I said, we have our mountain environment, by our uh, alpine center in, in Pieve Tesino. Um, and here is a, a forest map of Italy, just to show you that really there is a close correspondence of forest ecosystem and mountain. Obviously, because in uh, the plain uh, there is a, a high concentration of people. Um, uh, urban areas, industries, agriculture too, where is most of the forests are in the mountains. So there is this close uh, relationship between mountain environment and forest and forest ecosystem, uh, particularly in Italy and in the Mediterranean. This is a very important relationship. So forest surface consistently overlaps with mountain areas in many parts of southern Europe. Uh, however, we have a lot of forest. We have a large forest cover in Italy. You see, 40% of Italy is covered by forest. That is more or less the same percentage as in uh, all over Europe. Where is uh, uh, our um, wood production? The wood harvest is only 30% of the annual increment of woody biomass. So this means that we utilize. We are quite conservative in utilization of forest biomass. And so this means that really uh, uh, forest management could be considered highly sustainable in, uh, uh, in, in, in Italy. And uh, I uh, close with uh, uh, two more slides just to show you few information about uh, uh, Italian forestry. Italian forests are rich of biodiversity because they we are in a, I mean, we have a very, uh, we stretch from, 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 from southern Italy, from the Mediterranean climate up to northern Italy in the Alps that is almost in Central Europe. So we have a very large latitudinal and therefore also environmental gradient that is at the base of this rich biodiversity of our, of our forest. We have 25,000 plant species in Italy and in the Mediterranean, that is a much larger amount of species or larger biodiversity than in North and Central Europe. Uh, maybe this is uh, probably a smaller uh, biodiversity than in tropical countries, but uh, in, the, in the temperate environment, uh, I mean, uh, Mediterranean and Italy, all the very, I mean, it's a, it's a very hot spot of biodiversity also, also the forestry species, uh, I mean, are quite uh, a large number, 100 forest uh, uh, tree species compared to about 30 in North Central Europe. And one uh, other, uh, let's say, a reason for this uh, large biodiversity is because Italy and in general the Mediterranean represented in the past during uh, the glacial time a refugium for for uh, most of the uh, plant and forest species from uh, uh, northern and central Europe because they came down to survive uh, during glacial time. And then from the Mediterranean, from the Italian peninsula, they started again to recolonize uh, all Europe. And so this is also another reason why um, Italy and in general the Mediterranean countries are a hotspot for uh, biodiversity. And of course, we had also uh, um, a coevolution of our landscape between uh, nature and, and, and man, because, I mean, uh, uh, the Mediterranean has been inhabited since thousands and thousands of years. Here are just a few slides of the different forest types of Italy, from the Mediterranean up to um, uh, the Plain Valley and the mountain where we can have very uh, tall uh, um, conifer forest. And I just close by mentioning 
one other important issue uh, dealing with uh, with forest ecosystem that is for instance one of the uh, one of the uh, ecosystem services environmental environmental function provided by uh, by by forest and uh, this is this deals with uh, uh, as all of you know uh, with carbon absorption and therefore mitigation uh, of uh, of climate change um, we conducted um, researches in, in in this field so in uh, in uh, uh, we we measure the absorption of carbon in different type of forests with different uh, instruments but i mean i want just to show you few uh, let's say synthetic data hmm? to show the uh, the role of um, agriculture that is in general uh, is a kind of uh, uh, sector that uh, uh, is a source of carbon hmm? croplands in in europe um, are a source of carbon where is uh, a, a strong sink of carbon are forest uh, uh, ecosystem and therefore i mean this is an important issue. This is an important issue for research, for instance, now to know how it will uh, develop in, in the future, and also how management could improve uh, this uh, uh, mitigation potential of, uh, of forest. And uh, uh, of course, measurements, um, I mean, hold a certain uncertainty. So there is research, a lot of research beyond all of this, but this is also a quite important uh, uh, sector for uh, application for the um, global change convention and so on. So this is a very hot topic uh, presently, the role of the forest sector and in general agricultural sector in uh, mitigation and uh, adaptation. And uh, with uh, this uh, information about uh, um, ecosystem services, eh, from the mountain area, I close mentioning that uh, forest carbon sequestration could account for a large part, up to 20% of our uh, European carbon emission. In the world, it could be even 30%. And so a lot of interest there is also on how to increase this uh, carbon sequestration potential, uh, especially in uh, the forest, in mountain forests. And so this is a quite uh, important issue for uh, at, at the global scale. And uh, with this uh, information, I uh, close my short uh, uh, presentation of uh, University of Viterbo and what we are doing. And uh, uh, I wish all of you a, a nice uh, uh, iPromo 2021, hope, hopefully, and uh, seeing you next year. Okay, uh, Rosa Laura, back to you. Thank you, Giuseppe, and thank you, Michele. I think that in agreement with our chair, we can have now uh, some space for question and answers in case there are uh, points for clarification or any any need for commenting, any question, we are, we are here to, uh, to initiate this dialogue with you all. So feel free. Oh, can, can, you, can, can you hear me? Very well, go ahead. Okay, perfect. The, there was a, a, a question concerning the hashtag. I have already answered it in the, in the chat. And the, the hashtag is uh, uh, Mountain Matter. So please check it in the, in the chat. I've already wrote it uh, as an answer to the question. But please feel free to, to ask other questions. Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, we need to wait some time to break the ice. So perhaps Danilo, you can go ahead with your presentation and then we may ask again if there are questions after your presentation. I had a question. Can I ask before he comes? Sure, sure, sure. 
Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Godfrey Mwesije. I'm in Uganda, uh, in East Africa. I'm happy to be part of uh, this group and for learning. Thank you for the presentations. Uh, you talked about something like we shall be learning in form of groups. Uh, I think that is interesting. We shall be able to share experiences, but I want some highlights on how these groups will be formed and how, uh, how they will be uh, taken on. How shall we uh, join these groups uh, in working together as we learn and share, share from each other? Thank you. Okay, the, the, the groups and other logistical information I will provide uh, in a few minutes in my presentation. So <laughs> no, don't, don't worry, thank you will provide uh, information. Every, every information, but thank you for your question. Any other questions? I suggest you uh, to use this uh, ceremony as a, as a warm up because every day you will be invited to interact with, uh, with the lecturers and, uh, and also with other participants. So please <laughs> try, to, <laughs> try to, to enter the mood uh, and ask questions because this is the, the, the time you have to, to exploit uh, in order to, to get information from the, from the lecturers. Then, okay, you, you will have uh, the presentations and uh, everything recorded and shared, but when uh, everything is uh, in real time is, is better, I think. <laughs> uh, hi, maybe I, I can say something? Hi, please. Uh, hi, I'm Claudia Grados. I'm from Peru. Uh, I don't have an, a specific question because everything was clear, but it was, I just wanted to comment that uh, it was really interesting to understand more about um, how the relationship of forests with uh, mountains. I didn't know exactly that about Italy. So uh, for me, it, it's a really interesting warm up to understand other, other, other contexts. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, I would like to make a comment here. Uh, as you have seen, the four of us who have spoken so far are all Italians, and uh, there are very few English mother tongue in the group. So please feel free to speak whatever is your level of English. Uh, don't be shy. This is really a space for dialogue. And um, we really encourage you to communicate and uh, interact. I I'm sure you know, in the coming days, Dialogue will become much more uh, easy and relaxed, but um, yeah, so it's just a very informal space. Hi, I'm Pranay from Nepal. Mm. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for giving the opportunity to, to attend this course. Actually, last year I was in Turin and I did my master's in social innovation for sustainable development from the ITC ILO. Now, I have a few questions in my mind after seeing the presentation of uh, Rosa Laura. It was so nice. The question is just only do we have some innovative approach or social innovation approach or any approach for the developing countries mountain area so that we can uh, reduce the hunger or reduce the uh, food security from those, those areas from the developing countries mountain area. Thank you. Uh, this is a very, very complex, interesting question. You know, uh, I was going through quickly this publication that, uh, and studies that we had of insecurity that marked the vulnerability of mountain people to food insecurity since the year 2000. And in the last publication, we did try to understand the causes of this food insecurity and to understand why food insecurity in mountain areas is on the rise. While in most areas in the world, uh, food security was decreasing, at least before the pandemic. Well, we have uh, analyzed a, a number of situations. First of all, uh, the productivity in mountain areas is pretty low. The distance from market tend to be much higher than in lowland areas. So it's difficult to buy, it's difficult to exchange, and it's very difficult to sell. 
and middlemen are often buy all the products for nothing, for very little. Another big issue for mountains is the um, uh, relevance of conflict and war. As you know very well, many mountain areas are borders among countries, between countries. And this is causing uh, sometimes that uh, conflicts are uh, fought in mountain areas. So, so this, is, this has a very big impact on the local economy. If you have instability, if you're not sure about land tenure, if you're not sure about your tomorrow, you don't invest. You don't invest in the uh, in agriculture, you don't invest in innovation, you don't invest in irrigation, etc. I was mentioning land tenure, another big issue, mountain areas, land tenure, uh, it's often very unsure. Then there is this other issue that is the distance between mountain areas and the capital. Uh, in Latin America, this is quite different because there are a number of countries that have their capitals in mountain areas, but in general, around the world, most countries have the capital in the lowland areas because it's easier to have capitals, not a big cities there. And uh, mountain areas are quite remote. Often you have different ethnic groups living in mountain areas, different from those that are living in the lowland and in the capital. So the investment tends to go where the territory is more productive, where you have more people. Many mountain people don't vote because they are too far away, so they have very little political influence. So I have just you know, shared some of the causes for this uh, food insecurity, for this prevailing poverty. What can be done? Of course, the social cohesion to, and to ensure that there is a, a cohesion within the country, between all the areas, is a key fact. You know? I mean, it, it's, it's needed to have uh, the same level of services, services, infrastructures, indicators in all areas. This is absolutely important for many reasons. The first one is to reduce the out-migration flow. Many people out-migrate from mountain areas because they want to give their children a better future, which is a very, very normal and uh, you know, aspiration everywhere in the world. So if you cannot find schools, hospital, but also infrastructure in mountain areas like banks or training center, etc. This is the reality that people would leave. They would not be happy to leave. In many cases, they're not happy to leave, but they're forced to leave. And sometimes the men leave and the women stay behind with their elderly and the children. And no, there are a lot of social consequences to this. What we do? Well, no, as a, as a secretariat of the only United Nations Partnership for Mountains, we feel this responsibility. We feel this responsibility very strongly. And this is why we try always to ensure that mountains are included in the discussion at the UN level, to ensure that they receive attention. That means investment. When we say attention, at the end means specific policies and specific investment. Because mountains are complicated environment and there is not an easy solution to the many problems the many challenges of mountain air so i could talk for hours about this i'm very passionate about this but i'll stop here but i'm sure that at the end of the course you will have many more uh, replies than i have and it would be interesting to, to listen to you thank you thank you very much okay more questions I'm happy to see that the ice is breaking. It's the only ice I, I, I like to see breaking. <laughs> Time for you. If there are no Hi. Questions. Hi, am I on the Please. Please. Mm -hmm. Hello, am I audible? Sure, Please. very well. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Anu from uh, Nepal. Um, I have this questions. I was quickly looking at the program agenda and as well as the discussion so far that we had uh, in this plenary uh, opening session. Uh, we have a very mixed group, right? And coming from a different disciplines. Um, lo uh, the, the looking at this whole, uh, the, the scope of this program is really how do we now 
probably reorient ourselves, you know, as a development practitioner, researcher, academicians, in the context that now there is whole, uh, I, this whole problem of pandemic and what does it mean to really, you know, in the post pandemic world, right? So uh, I wonder with this mixed group and, and many disciplines to cover, uh, would we be able to really unpack, you know, the depth that is required uh, so that each one can take back home in relation to, you know, what does it mean, uh, you know, in, in our own field, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm a practitioner, what do I, uh, you know, what would be the take home sort of a learning from this uh, two weeks? Um, so I wonder, is there a room uh, or, you know, an opportunity where people from a specific disciplines and interests would get opportunity to really unpack and really engage in an in-depth, uh, you know, discussions and trying to understand what it means, uh, you know, to be, you know, who we are as an individual or professional in, you know, and trying to solve the mountain issue in the post-pandemic world. Thank you. Uh, okay, let, let me start and then perhaps the others can complement. Um, well, we cannot solve all the problems and, uh, <laughs> in 10 days, but uh, this is just to provide some, uh, some knowledge, some, some ideas and to promote a dialogue and some reflection about how to improve the way we work. Uh, it's also a way to build your network so that you can rely uh, after this course on more colleagues and friends to be more efficient in your work. Uh, we have, um, as you know, as you notice, a, a quite good variety of backgrounds here, but most of the participants have a scientific background. Uh, most of you have a master's degree in a topic related to uh, other forestry, geography, agriculture, economy, and um, etc. Um, so we do hope that at the end of these 10 days, you will be able to bring home some uh, substantial, uh, uh, concrete uh, knowledge. Uh, as you have seen from the program, uh, we have uh, structures coming from, uh, uh, from Asia, from Latin America, from North America, from Europe, from etc. So we, we hope to be able to provide perspectives from different regions. And uh, but we will have very much to hear from you at the end of these 10 days. What's your feedback in the discourse? Because we always try to improve. So any feedback is very welcome. Uh, I don't know if Daniel or Michele, directly you would like to add something. Well, I, 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 can, uh, I can only suggest if there are no, no more questions that I can, I can show my presentation. Uh, I, I guess that a lot of this Doubts and questions will be will be solved because uh, I know you are curious about the structure of the course and since now you have only hints and not a real description of the of the course logistic and structure. So uh, I guess a lot of uh, your answer will be a lot of your questions will be answered by my presentation. I hope. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, we will. Uh, we have another question time at the end of my of my talk. So, Michele, if you want to add something more. No, I think it's a great idea just to, to show them, to the participants, the organization of the course. Of course, I agree with Rosa Laura. Uh, I think that this uh, group have the opportunity to face with other uh, disciplines, to other specialists. It's an interdisciplinary group, and I think that interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity are key words in order to obtain some solution for the problems that we are facing on. So uh, I think that maybe, Danilo, you can show the, the general uh, uh, organization of the course, but maybe at the end, uh, some more questions will arise and we try to answer. Maybe we can organize a final discussion. I don't know, Rosa Laura, Giuseppe, if you agree about, about that. Sure, absolutely, with pleasure. So I think that maybe, uh, Danilo, uh, just give some uh, information about, and then we can organize a final uh, general discussion at the end. Okay, and try to to share my my screen. Okay, so welcome again. Hope everybody hears me clearly. 
and then we will give you some more technical information about uh, about the course. Uh, I've been already introduced. Uh, my name is Daniel Godone. I will be the chairman of the course uh, and for technical and uh, issues uh, related and course related issues, please uh, refer to, to me and someone that has already uh, did it by, by email and feel free to, to continue. Unfortunately, we will have an online course for the second uh, for the second time, we, we were we hoped last year to organize only one one session of online promo, but uh, COVID uh, disagree with us. So we'd like to to share you the uh, the agenda just to 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 share all the details. We are now in the first day, and uh, we are. Uh, listening to all the uh, introductory talks concerning the course and I will show you now the structure of the of the course and all the details. Uh, in the next few days uh, we will, uh, I will be very happy to introduce you Professor Shire from University of British Columbia who is listening now to the, the ceremony and I need to say hello and I'm happy to, to see you again online, not in front of a beer. And uh, he will uh, talk about understanding sustainable mountain development in very different way and facets. Then at the end of the second day, we will uh, save a little bit of space for a brief talk from Michele Cucchi. Michele uh, is uh, an alpine guide from uh, Alanya Vosesia, which is a, a small village in uh, in the Alps, near uh, near Michele uh, Frequaz, but on the, on the on the other face of Monte Rosa Massif, and he's a mountain guy, is very active with this association, uh, Attivo, uh, or in, with uh, this project, with cooperation project in uh, in the Himalayas. So he will speak about solidarities in mountain areas during the uh, COVID-19 crisis. Then we will shift on uh, day nine uh, with you an excellent speaker, one from Condesan, Manuel Peravo, that will speak about Andes and uh, challenges and uh, issues of this uh, fascinating area. Then we will go back in, in Italy with uh, Professor Stanky from Isidia because we, we were in the university together. <laughs> And uh, uh, she will speak about mountain soil and carbon sequestration. In week two, we will start with an FAO lecturer, and uh, he will speak about uh, agri food system and food and sustainability mountain areas uh, in the aftermath of uh, COVID 19. Then on Tuesday, we will have a two speaker of uh, very high level, especially the first one because we work in my same research center, Elisa Palazzi and uh, Claudio Cassardo. They both teach at the University of Turin and uh, we, they will speak about uh, climate change and all the issues that you, you, can, you can imagine on, on mountain areas. Uh, then we will uh, we'll have two speakers, one from University of Turin uh, and one from FAO that we will uh, uh, lecture us about uh, mountain tourism and the restart of the tourism after the, the crisis. So we will finish the week with uh, two days of uh, zooming and particular uh, geographical regions. The first one uh, will be the Andes by Maria Cecilia Garcia from Uni Andes, and she will speak about water metabolism and water allocation in, in the Andes. And then the, on the last day, there will be two Zooms, one in Himalaya from uh, Abid Hussein from ICMO, and the last one from, uh, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, uh, Maria Ninik from James Hutton Institute and uh, concerning the social innovation and transformative opportunities in marginalized mountain areas. Then you will have a very, very, uh, working hard the weekend 
because and then the last day on the, on the Monday there will be a closing ceremony with the closing remarks from uh, Professor Freipatz, Professor Skarasha, Professor Laura Romeo, and then the floor be to you. We have you will have to to present your working working group presentation, and then we will close with unfortunately a virtual group picture. Concerning the schedule, uh, I, I just show this this one uh, is a sad sad slide because it, as you can see there were a lot of uh, different points: uh, bus transfer, repair, mountain pavement, luggage ready. Uh, I hope this slide uh, in the next year and next edition will be active and without this uh, awful uh, online edition on it. Okay, I I. I I dared to, to, to give you two, two, two slides, two ideas on the impact uh, and uh, what is uh, to, 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 to consider about the, the impact of COVID, not, not on mountain areas, uh, because it's very difficult to find uh, these beautiful graphs and, and data on a global situation of mountains and uh, the, the impact of, of COVID on, on them. Uh, so, uh, as I, I am a drone pilot, and so sometimes I, I study something related to, to aviation. I, I I took this 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 slide and, and the next one from the uh, ICAO, that is the International Civil Aviation Organization, uh, that show the the impact of uh, of COVID on a relatively more uh, economically. Uh, Sector that is, that is civil aviation. Uh, so you, you can see that in, in civil aviation, you have this decline of, from 40 to 50 percent of passenger uh, from 2020 versus 2021, uh, 20, um, 2019, sorry, and uh, a global decline in 2020 of 60 percent of passengers. And this is a, a, an historical. Uh, decline because, as you can see from the graph, all other crises, the oil crisis, Iran, Iraq war, Gulf crisis, and other crises, even the the, the, the attack to to uh, September 11 didn't give the, the same the same impact on on civil aviation. So you you can see how this uh, this crisis is is really historical. We will we will be recorded in in, in history books in the future for sure. Uh, but uh, this is uh, uh, the first point to do, to think about. But also this other graph uh, give me some some idea. Uh, this was not the, the the first crisis hitting the the aviation, as you can see in, in a smaller scale. Also the the SARS pandemic in two thousand three have a similar in, not in in the magnitude but a similar impact on uh, China domestic flights as you, you you can see a, a dramatic reduction and then in six months approximately the situation uh, became again uh, the same of the of, of the past so what, what is the point uh, okay we hope that covid will finish for sure and that uh, to we, we hope to, to to remove it from our mind forever. But other crises, as the climatic one and other that will that can eat our mountains, can come, can apparently disappear, but can come again. So we have to be ready with tools, with with, with whatever you you have in mind, to, to to have it ready to face again this kind of 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 crisis. Okay, coming back to the course, the course we focus on several aspects that will uh, help you to contribute to learn about integrated management of mountain areas according to, to different aspects, especially in recovery plans and in this concept of build back better. So uh, we don't have to came back to the same situation before COVID, we have to improve. We have to improve it and don't, 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 don't repeat the error of the past, hopefully. So the course will, will give you basic understanding of sustainable mountain development, tools to, to understand the climate change in mountains, 
agri-food system in order to increase mountain system resilience, uh, sustainable forest management, mountain tourism, and then we will give you some focus, some zoom in regional perspective to, to, to give different points of view concerning the mountain. And then the course we will uh, will ask you to form these working groups. In reality, the, the, the groups are already formed, but they will be used by you by share knowledge from one member to each other and uh, to build this expert network, hopefully for the future, not only for the for the course. By the IPROM alumni, uh, you will, will be invited to stay in contact. Okay, what, what this working group have to do? You will have to prepare a presentation. I think it is not a surprise. I already give you some anticipation in the first slide. To prepare a presentation uh, that will show us in the closing ceremony how to deal with post COVID 19 and mountain local development. The, the theme is, is the task is, is generic. Uh, just some advice uh, you can use something that is already related to an existing project as a starting point. You don't have to start from scratch. If you want, you can, obviously. And uh, obviously, take advantage of group discussion. Everybody have to contribute to this work and you, you have to exploit the, the, the other participant uh, knowledge and also exploit the lesson learned from lecturers for, them. for sure they have something to teach you. Okay, these are the four working groups. You don't have to take notes about the composition. I, I shared this, this slide on the e-learning platform and I will send it by email just to, to, to be sure that everybody is, is aware of, of, of the group he, he belongs. So, which are the tasks of each participant? You have to attend all the course in presence or uh, by listening to the recorded lesson. Every lesson will be recorded and shared uh, as soon as the system will send us an email. So don't worry. Uh, at the end of the ceremony, you will not find the, um, the recording link on the e-learning platform. Uh, there is some technical time uh, to, to convert all the, all the recording to, to a, a file or multiple files. And uh, also the, um, the link will be shared by email. Then we will verify the attendance by, by test. You, you will find the quiz for every day of the course, except the ceremony, so you will not, uh, you, you don't need to, to answer quiz for today and for the last day. So today you can relax a little bit and um, you need to score at least 80% of answers because uh, there will be uh, easy and we would like only to, to check that you understood the, the and attended the lecture. Is it mandatory? It is mandatory to submit the personal presentation. Uh, I, I, I saw that a lot of emails arrived this morning and, uh, and uh, this afternoon, uh, and I will send a, a reminder to, to, to those who are, are still in working on, on their presentation. And then uh, the working groups are autonomous. So uh, as soon as I show you the, um, the members, feel free to organize and uh, organize and arrange meetings and uh, whatever you need to complete the, the task. And obviously each working group will present its work at the closing ceremony. Some boring info, but uh, I know it's part of my, of my task. We will have two lecture room. One is the, the virtual room from Professor Krepatz. The other one is the virtual room from Professor Stanky. You will be uh, advised by email you know, which which link you have to use for the next day so don't worry and in case ask by email I, I, I will give you all the information all the course material including slides 
uh, including the um, recording and quizzes, obviously, will be shared in the learning platform. So as soon as they're ready, I, I will share them in, uh, in the learning platform so you will find everything there. Uh, to be sure that everybody is able to, to, read, to listen to the uh, recording, I will share also by email the uh, lecture recording. Every lecture will be subdivided in four slots uh, that will be subdivided in 45 minutes of lecture and 15 minutes of question and answer. Uh, to avoid confusion, please use the, um, the chat instrument. So write the question even during the uh, even during the lecture. So during the question time, I will be able to to, to share the question with with the, with the lecture. And obviously, if you if you need to to go in deep or you are out of time uh, concerning some question, you you can you can submit directly to the to the lecturer by email or by the means of contact he provided. Okay, I. Going to, to, to finish with these uh, details concerning the learning platform. Uh, it's not so intuitive, but uh, if you follow this instruction, I'm sure that everybody will be able to connect. Uh, you have to use the provided link that is shown in step number one. And by clicking on it, you, you will open the uh, web, web, web page that I'm showing in step number two. There is a, a big white page with only these two username and password uh, little windows. The username and password system is case sensitive, so be sure to, to write it according to, to the, uh, the email that you received. If somehow uh, you arrive at uh, the web page showed in uh, step three, don't use the credential you've received, go back to step one, because from the page shows in, uh, in step three, you, you won't be able to access it. So uh, remember, the, the only way is step one and step two. Okay, if you follow step one and step two correctly, you arrive at this, uh, uh, this web page, and this is the beautiful campus uh, where Professor Krepat and Professor Stanky work, and where I've studied. A few years ago, more or less, and you can select the, the language. Uh, so you can use English or uh, uh, Spanish as well. There is Italian, there is Deutsch, and uh, there is another menu with your name and with some um, with, with some links. Uh, the, the the link here to 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 select is dashboard. And then from here you arrive. I'm sorry, this is my page, so I, I'm, I'm not sure that they, you, you will see the link to iPromo 2020, 20, but only the, the, the current one. You have to click on iPromo 2021, and from here you enter in, uh, in the course. I'm showing here the uh, structure of the uh, previous course, just to, to show you uh, something with, with, uh, uh, with data inside the the current course is, is quite blank. You can find files like the uh, iPromo agenda. You can find folders which contains uh, uh, teaching materials. You can find links, usually uh, to the uh, to the recording of the of the lecture, but not only to to extend the resource. You will find the quiz that has this uh, this icon and. Uh, for every day, you, you will find the, uh, the, the lecture, the recorded lecture, and, and the slides. So everything will be uh, available for, for you to, to study and to fulfill the, the task. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your attention. And uh, if there are questions, we are here, please. I know that my presentation is quite boring, I know. <laughs> Hi, I have uh, two questions. Hi. 
Hi. Um, uh, I wanted to ask, like, uh, first, uh, for the quizzes, we only have one opportunity to fill them. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the second one was about the presentation on the closing ceremony. Um, from what I understand, we guide our group discussions according to this uh, main theme, how to deal with COVID-19 um, in mountain local development. Uh, I wanted to know around how much time do we will have for the presentations? Okay, according to the past edition, you will have uh, 15, 20 minutes and uh, to, to, to present uh, your your work. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions before we move on? Danilo, your presentation was too clear. It's your fault. Next or time you have, add, you, you have to add something, you know, some mistakes. <laughs> my, um, my, my mistake was to, to, to forget the, 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 the duration of the presentation. <laughs> Uh, hi, this is Piyush. I had a question in the uh, four because it seems like four hours of nonstop sitting through lectures. Do you think it'll be possible to have maybe a five or ten minute break uh, somewhere, maybe at the two hour mark every day? Oh, if I understood correctly, you you were asking about breaks in uh, between lessons. Uh, yes, maybe in uh, at least one break in the four hour uh, sitting. Yes, but okay. Uh, we we are uh, if if you, we are in time because sometimes we we have a lot of questions after one uh, one lecture. We we allow uh, the the coffee break uh, for for changing, for example, from a lecturer to another one. And uh, even if I showed only the, the lecture time, the lecture days, in, there are in between two weekends. This is not uh, really a uh, full immersion. Yeah, I, I meant the first, the first thing. It's not the not the weekends. The yeah, okay, no, no, no. We we okay. We are humans, so we, we know that sometimes we we need coffee, especially in Italy. And so don't worry. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Danilo, in the chat there is a question about the a round of personal introduction. I don't know um, because they ask maybe Maria Cecilia Roa Garcia ask, ask about um, if is the planet um, a personal uh, introduction. I, I think that we are too many. Maybe in the working groups. I don't know. At the end, maybe everyone could introduce briefly. But the members yeah. of the team, or what do you she, think? Michele, she's a lecturer. Oh, okay. And, uh, um, but usually we, uh, I introduce every lecturer the day of the, of the lecture. But if you want to introduce you, you are welcome here. <laughs> yeah, but sorry, I didn't understand the question. I, I, I imagine for the participants. Sorry for that. Oh. I, it was my mistake. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I think, yes, Maria Cecilia is a, is a professor. In fact, she, uh, was presented to us by Anne Schreier, so she's uh, and she's coming to work in the University of An University of the Andes. Um, well, I think the the participants will introduce themselves during the next uh, agenda item, uh, but perhaps it would be good to ask the professors who are here with us to introduce themselves. I think we have Maria Cecilia, and we also have. Uh, uh, we sent from Isimo, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if and it was Maria. I don't know if Maria is also still with us. Yeah, I'm here and yeah, uh, just wanted to say hi and mm -hmm. tell you that I'm very excited to be here. And yeah, I'm just very curious to uh, find a little bit more about the participants. So I was wondering if 
um, there was there's, if there's going to be a, a chance to have a brief introduction of all the participants. That was my, my, my question too, because every time it's very nice to hear about the different participants, you know, <laughs> the background and experience, but I think we are too many. I don't know, Danilo, okay. Rosanaldo, Giuseppe. <laughs> Every time we, we maybe at the end for, for, for the, before the working group presentation, what do you think? Maybe a short uh, presentation about the members of the groups. I don't know. If we go fast, we can go uh, according to the participant list. If you have the participant list, we can go very quickly. Just uh, everyone, if everyone could just say uh, the name and the affiliation and the country of origin, so we can have an idea. And if it's possible. Switch on the camera so we can see you, you know, we can see your face. So, okay. Uh, in, on my participant list, I am the first I, one that possibly did this uh, personalized I, and Danilo and I can provide. <laughs> hmm? I can provide immediately. Yes, so then we can go to uh, Habib Hussain, Tunisian. Would you, would you introduce yourself, Habib? Thank you so much, Rosa Laura. So I am Abid Hussain by training. I am development economist and within development economics, my expertise are on economics of development and planning. So I have been working on mountain issues, particularly mountain food security and livelihoods for the last 17 years. So I taught in a couple of universities also in Thailand. I served Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. And in Pakistan, also two public sector universities, I served as faculty. Super. So around nine years, around nine years ago, I joined EC World. Thank you very much. Very good. And next on the Thank list is my colleague, Alison. Alison, please introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Allison, and I work here in the Mountain Partnership Secretariat with Rosa Laura. I'm originally from Philadelphia in the United States, but I've been living here in Rome for six years. So I help with all the communications activities for the MPS. And yes, thank you. Great. Anu, you are next. Hi. Oh. I am Hans Schreier. I work at the University of British Columbia. And I will talk to you tomorrow and give you all the details about what we are going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Anu Fulano. Sorry, um, I keep the voice, the sound was so, you know, so I could not, it was me or not, but if it's me, okay, hi, once again. Um, this is Anu Lama from Nepal. I work at Isi Mode um, and I've been working in Isi Mode since past six years, but as far as my background is concerned, I'm a human geographer, but also have degrees in recreations and tourism management and a PhD and also climate adaptations, tourism and governance. Um, and um, it's nice to be here. So looking forward to the course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next on my list is Anurada. Anurada. You, we can hear you. Okay, let's keep an urana. Let's move to Aidan. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Very well. Hi. Great. So this is Aidan and I'm from Turkey. Uh, I am originally an urban planner and I am uh, currently studying sustainable tourism and my focus area is sustainable mountain tourism. I used to work for FAO Turkey. Now I'm in UN Volunteers Turkey, and uh, I'm a mountain enthusiast. Thank you. Thank you. And the next on my list is Barkat Tati. Hi, everyone. This is, this is Mita. Am I audible to all? Very well. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening here. It is seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, yeah, it was a really very nice presentation and good to meet you all virtually. Uh, my name is Smita. I am working with MPO India uh, since last almost uh, two and a half years. 
my background is agriculture i have done uh, my master degree in agriculture from india and i have done my second masters from uh, university of florida us on soil and water science and pre presently on behalf of fao india i am working on uh, four projects which are being implemented in two uh, hilly uh, states of india thank you thank you Anita, would you like to go ahead with the list? Next is Barak Badur Kapka. Barak, you there? Yes, yes. Are you are you all audible? Listening my voice? I am hello. Hello. Barak, we can hear you very well. Please introduce yourself. Okay, let's move to the next. If you open the participant list, uh, we, you can see that the order, so you can prepare yourself. The next on my list, on my list is uh, Dr. Sakala. Please go ahead. Can you help me? Sure, go yes. ahead. Yeah, hello everyone again. Uh, my name is Bill Pasola and I'm a Palazzo Mode, I've been basically working on ecosystem management and uh, for livelihood development. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on my list is Charambol Osiris. Please go ahead. Hi everyone, this is Carla Bos. Uh, from Cyprus, not sure if you can hear me because I think I'm having this audio problem. Uh, as I said, I'm from Cyprus. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to participate in iPromo 2021. And right now, the project I'm working on is the organization and operation of a non-profit institution for the sustainable development of the mountains called the Mountain Institute. Uh, it deals with the research and development institute for the Mediterranean regions um, from mountainous islands of the Mediterranean. Thank you very much again. Thank you. Welcome. First time back to people from Cyprus. So next Thank is uh, Chirib Rizal. Hi. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. This is Chirib Rizal. I'm working in East Africa, Uganda. Uh, I'm working under the Red Cross movement, responding emergency program, livelihood, disaster response, flood, drought, and refugee response there in Uganda. So my master's degree in development management, uh, specialization on rural livelihood, gender, and social inclusion. Uh, I'm interested to participate this two weeks training. Thank you. Thank you. So next is Claudia, Claudia Grados. Hi, uh, do you hear me? Very well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I'm Claudia. I'm from Peru. I work uh, in the National Research Institute in Glaciers and Mountain Ecosystems since last year. Um, so it has been a re remote virtual experience, but now I'm in, in Huaraz, in the city where the institute is located, hoping to do some field work. And uh, related to my background, I'm an anthropologist, so I have a more fieldwork experience in mountain areas um, in the Andean region and also in part of, of the Amazon. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Claudia. Danus, now we have an old friend. Danus, are you there? Danus, are you connected? Okay, Danus uh, cannot hear us, so let's move to Pranab Patal. Pranab, you there? Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Sure. Good, good evening. Hi, everyone. Uh, greetings from India. I'm based out of New Delhi. I work with an Indian charitable organization, Global Foundation. We are based out of Delhi. 
work on wide ranging environmental issues, including the mountains. I am uh, a trained environmental scientist uh, with a PhD in management. My work was focused around tourism and biodiversity issues. Uh, so it's wonderful to be here. And uh, if Rosa, Rosa Laura recalls, uh, I was an applicant in 2009. And then we have had a series of communications, but somehow it didn't work out. Then over the years, I also got busy with my work. but. Uh, I, the, this year, I'm really happy to be here as part of the IPROMO. So, thank you. Welcome. And, uh, my greetings to uh, all the participants and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Pranav. Fernando, are you there? Uh, hello to everyone. My name is Fernando Cisterna from Peru. I am uh, a, a career diplomat at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we are currently working. I'm part of the team that's worked with the uh, Andean Mountains Initiative. I'd like to thank uh, the Mountain Partnership and all the co organizers for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes. Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is Ganga Vista and I'm from Nepal. Uh, I'm uh, My background is uh, forestry and I'm currently working in a Federation of Community Forest Users Group Nepal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Gulam Muhammad. Hi everyone, I'm Gulam Muhammad from Baldistan Wildlife Conservation and Development Organization. Uh, we are working for snow leopard conservation in Pakistan in northern areas. So thank you very much for selecting us for this wonderful course. Thank you, Gulam. Thank you. Next is Godfrey. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is Godfrey Mwesiji. I'm from Uganda. I work with the Albertine Rift Conservation Society and uh, as the regional policy officer for Africa Mountains program. Uh, currently, we are implementing the adaptation at altitude program uh, for East Africa together with UNEP and GRID Arendo. Uh, it focuses on uh, increasing knowledge uh, on climate change and adaptation solution uh, for mountain communities. And we intend to feed this information into the policy processes uh, for the region, but also increase uh, climate uh, resilience to climate change. Yeah, I'm happy for this opportunity to participate in this program and in this course. Thank you very much. Thank you, Godfrey. Next on my list is Kunjan. Kunjan. Hello, everyone. Yeah my, yeah, my name is Gunjan Silwal and I'm from Nepal. I'm a cryosphere researcher and currently I'm working on freshwater resources modeling and management on the stone slope of Canadian Rockies and also in the Himalayas. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I hope it will be a good one. Thank you, Gunjan. Next of my list is uh, HP. HP, whoever you are, would you like to introduce yourself? It's like hidden participant. Uh, 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 hello, this is Pranesh Resta from Nepal. Sorry, there was HP, okay. <laughs> no, it's fine. Sorry. It's fine. Mm. Next time you please write your full name, so it's easier for yeah, me. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, my background is like uh, IT and innovation and mostly Nowadays, I'm working for uh, this carbon neutral high mountain villages concept where, where the zero waste organic farming and uh, the sustainable cell system for the foods from the high mountain that is that is going to be that is going to be developed and I'm attached with progressive Nepal in Nepal. Thank you. Thank you. Then we have uh, another colleague. Jacopo. Yes. Yes. Hello, everyone. 
Um, and Jakub Schurk, I'm a geographer. I currently work for the Food Systems and Food Safety Division at FAO. Uh, my colleague, Jose, is going to give you uh, a neat course next week on Monday uh, on food systems and agro, food, agro, agro businesses. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jakub. Next is Joel Rodriguez. Hello, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joao Rodriguez. I'm from Portugal, uh, working for the Dunkey Sanctuary in the UK. Uh, I'm a veterinarian and my main area of interest and expertise is working equids and uh, the importance in this case, the importance that working equids, especially donkeys and mules, can have and have for mountain communities. So really looking forward to, to hear what you have to say and learn and share the, the importance of these equids for the mountain areas. Thank you. Thank you, Joao. And the next on my list is Kundan. Kundan Beast. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Kundan Beast from India. I live in Nainital, Uttarakhand. Non profit organization, Central Himalayan Environment Association, known as a CIA. It's a non profit organization. And my working area is uh, mountain rural livelihoods, sustainable uh, sustainable use of natural resources and conservation. Uh, thank you for the opportunities. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now we have another acronym, KWJ. Uh, please introduce yourself. Thank you. My name is Mukana Ashkaran Derke. I'm from Gwanda. I would like to thank you for giving us special opportunities and for great presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Manas Dwedi. Everyone, uh, my name is Manas Dwedi, and I'm an Indian national uh, working with German Development Cooperation on local adaptation planning issues and green recovery. Thank you, Manas. Uh, Maria Cecilia, would you like to introduce yourself again? I think you, you, you did that. Yes, I did. Uh, no, very excited to meet you all. Great. So we move to Najendra Bastakoti. Najendra, are you there? Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Nagendra Bastakoti from Nepal. Uh, I'm working for the practical action under sustainable agriculture and markets, especially we are focusing on the hilly area in the coffee uh, sector area. My, uh, I'm looking after the coffee project in the hilly area. Uh, thank you for the, this golden opportunity uh, to be here. Okay, thank, thank you. Very interesting. Next is a colleague from my team, Patricia. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so my name is Patricia. I work with the Mountain Partnership Secretariat team. I am from Andorra in the Pyrenees, and I am an environmental lawyer by studies. So it's great to be here. Thank you. Patricia just adopted two lovely kittens. So I was expected to see the, the, the two little things in the... In the in the, in the I, you, they are sleeping now. <laughs> okay, so let's move to Piyush Pranaptar. Hi, this is Piyush. I work as a disaster risk management specialist with the World Bank in India. Uh, my background is that I have a master's in architecture from Grenoble and an uh, excellent geography from the Sorbonne. I've been working with the bank full time for the past three, four years, and uh, part of my responsibilities are a project in the state of Uttarakhand in the Himalayas and in a neighboring state of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, where we are basically responding to uh, disasters post uh, floods. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Ryan. Ryan. Yes, hi. Hey, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zaria Mufarreh. I am uh, from Saudi Arabia and uh, I work uh, at a Suda development company as environmental officer. And uh, my majoring is uh, microbiologist. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Next is Ali Ali. Hello, everyone. Uh, 
Thank you, Ryan. First time we have a participant from Saudi Arabia also, so very happy to welcome you here. Thank you. Next, uh, Sandia Thapa. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Sandhya Thapa from Nepal. Uh, my background is from Masters in Environment Science, majoring in Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management of Mountain Environment. And currently I'm working for Federation of Community Forestry Users Nepal. And I am working with the project called uh, Strengthening Disaster Risk Management and Climate Change Adaptation Capacity of Community Forestry User Groups Nepal. So thank you so much for letting me to join this program. Welcome on board. Next is Shajuti Sarkarde. Shajuti, you there? Yeah. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Shajuti from Society for Natural Resource Management and Community Development, India. I have done Masters in Environmental Science and uh, MBA in uh, Environmental Management. And I have 15 years of experience of working in the mountain areas of uh, Uttarakhand and also in the northeastern states of India. Uh, I have worked for the forest management, seed bank development, and livelihood development of mountain women based on the natural resources available in the mountain areas. Uh, presently, I'm working with the state government of Assam, where we are working as an implementation support agencies for Assam Jal Jeevan Mission which, for providing safe uh, drink and portable drinking water to 64,000 households. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank, thank you for the opportunity for uh, letting me participate in this uh, very beautiful course. Thank you. Thank to you. And uh, last but not least, we have Shalini. Shalini, you there? Hello. Uh, good evening yeah. from India. Uh, uh, it's such to be part of uh, And it's a pleasure to see you, Rosalora and Kelly. Because I was a uh, participant in 2009 course. Uh, then ended. So, are you able to hear? Uh, yeah, the are you... is but we can hear. Okay. Uh, so, I'm a trained forester. I work in Western Himalayas and um, I'm mostly interested in natural and man-made pressures on Himalayas. And uh, with the recent last few years of work, I am working on ecosystem health assessment by understanding the replacement of keystone species because of climate change. So this is briefly uh, what I work in Himalayas. Uh, and I am a senior scientist with Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in India. So that's one of the oldest organization that we have in Central India, National Environmental Engineering Research Institute. And I'm also working with IUCN Commission on Ecosystems Management. And uh, so, yeah, such a pleasure to be back again and get in touch with all and memories uh, getting fresh of 2009. Thank you so much for having me again back to this course. And I look forward to a very fruitful discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shalini. If someone that uh, was not able to introduce him or herself is back and would like to talk, please. There is another one, another participant that disconnected and connected again. With ah, seven. Go ahead. Seven, please. <laughs> okay. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Am I allowed an audible? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Sila Ranto from Lesotho. Uh, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I work. Uh, I work for the government of Lesotho as a range management uh, specialist. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sila. So over to you, Danilo. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for introducing themselves. 
and uh, now we we can uh, we can conclude this first day of uh, of ceremony and of sorry, first day of course with this intro introductory ceremony from tomorrow we will have uh, four intense hours so it's time to to relax and uh, collect energy for the rest of the course so thank you very much to everybody. Thank you very much to Rosalara, first of all, to Professor Frepas and Professor Skarasha, and to all the lecturers and all the participants. And uh, see you tomorrow at two o'clock Rome time. Remember, you should have received the, the, the link to the, the virtual classroom and uh, prepare for tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and bye.